So, so I'm gonna get. So let me give you three stories. That one that 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 gives you an example out of uh, each one. Um, first one is story of Mike. Mike is a guy uh, who who uh, started in the military. He actually was in the military, uh, finished that service, got married, had some kids, um, jumped onto an organization, started at the help desk. No technical background. But with the military skill, oftentimes I find, as, as I hire folks from the military, they have a sense of discipline, they have a sense of loyalty, they have a sense of, of drivenness that oftentimes you just don't get without, without, uh, without some of that background. So he jumped into the, the help desk, he learned the skills needed. So we'll, we'll chalk that up to general aptitude. Why? Because he was a gamer. He just could, he kinda got, got how computers work. He began to help, helping people Eventually, he started to move more into the server side of things. And I'm talking Windows servers, you know, building servers, hosted servers, making and it started simple. Hey, uh, we have a need. All these servers need to be updated. Okay, I can do that. You know, yes, it requires evening work. It requires, you know, 10 p.m. at night, sending outage notifications, all that kind of stuff. It's not a job. People are like, man, I, I really want to make sure servers are updated. He did. And he started driving down that road started learning more about servers, started specializing a little bit more in exchange, email, things like that. And again, grew, again, see how this, this general broad into more specialized, grew into the server side. Now, the funny thing is, he eventually started realizing, you know, not really a fan of this. Mike, in this case, loved kind of like, <laughs> I have my, my Sharpies right here. You know, when, when the day is over, here, let me, let me uh, flip, you know, when the day is over, one of the things, I, I don't know why I, I love doing this, I'll just set them, they're exactly the, the same distance apart, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, look at this, you know, right there, right there, right there, every single one, you know, and, and, th and that, that's, that's Mike, you know, he's like, I love just making, that, that's why he gravitated towards server updates, and so the need that he, he identified this, we finally just put a name to it, we said, hey, why don't you dive into network operations? You know, the knock. We have a knock, uh, and I'm talking about a guy who who still works for us this day, and he runs our network operations center. He's like, everything will be crisp. I mean, literally every single morning, 6 a.m. perfect on the dot. We get an email, or, or sorry, a, a Teams message. We use Microsoft Teams uh, with a screenshot of the the current dashboard. Here's any alarms. We see the description again. <laughs> it's it's this. Oh oh, hang on, nope right there. Everything is perfect every single time. And he's doing an amazing job at it. I sleep better at night. And that, so back to the needs of an employer, you know, it's like, hey, I just want to sleep good at night. I want to make sure that everything's running. That's Mike. Okay. So that's one journey that someone took. Let me talk about Sally. Um, Sally uh, came out of a rough, rough, rough situation, rough background, rough life. Um, just looking for some place that she could land. Again, started on the help desk, um, and she, she. So, so interestingly enough, not really an aptitude uh, for technology. hadn't done any of it in the past, but was driven enough because of the background that she had come from that she's like, I can figure this out. Just started taking phone calls. You know, like, hi, thanks for calling. Uh, can I direct you to the right place? And as as she would hear, you know, hear the issue, like, why are you calling? She'd go, okay. I've heard something. I wonder how that's fixed. So she would transfer the call and then she'd run over and, and watch how, how is the technician fixing this? So what I'm talking about here is remember, and this is, this is where I'm like, find out what employers need. Sometimes just somebody to sit there and answer the phone and direct the call to the right place is a full-time job depending on the call volume coming in. Now, there's gonna be other things associated with that. Hey, while while you're waiting for the next call, you know, update the spreadsheet, you know, create this ticket. You know, there's, there's gonna be all these kind of things. So Sally would sit there and watch, you know, how, how are these things resolved? And within a couple months, she was able to take the call and little known fact, you know, she would actually solve it right there. They'd be like, hey, I'm running into this and this. And she's like, oh, I, I know that. And then, bam, you know, before long, She's moved from phone call answerer, I don't even know what that position's called, into I'm on the help desk. Now, what she started finding as she was on that, that help desk is that she had more of an interest in organizing things. You know, 
thousand devices would come in needing to be imaged and sent to the customer. She was like, hey, let, let's make sure they're all in the right place. Let's make sure they all get the right asset tag. Like, like she would gravitate to that rather than the technology. And the next step that she took is let me manage that project. Hey, we've got the, you know, the device imaging project. Let me manage that. And before long, Sally is now a project manager, an IT project manager, even though she would probably still describe herself like, I'm not really a technologist. She now knows how to talk the talk. She's conversationally competent to where she can talk to engineers and technicians, understand at least the premise or at least enough to ask the right questions. Uh, hang on, describe that. What do you mean by that? Right? Ask the right questions so that she can hone in the project and continue it from there. That's the story of Sally. The last one, I'll use his real name um, because uh, he's, he's a fun one. I, 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 I talk about him. I don't know why. His, his name is my name. His name is actually Jeremy Stretch. Um, Jeremy is a guy who actually, if, if, why am I drawn to him? Hmm. Uh, he took classes uh, a long time ago, long time, I'm talking decades ago. Um, when I was teaching CCNA, um, probably like version two for CBT Nuggets, this has been, been, been a while. Um, he, somehow he asked me some questions. I don't even know how I, I ended up connected with him, but I saw him start a blog, his blog of learning CCNA, learning Cisco networking. And he would actually just post, Hey, I'm learning OSPF right now. Here's, you know, here's, here's how the area concept work. And he would do it well. I mean, crisp, great looking blog. Well, he ended up getting his CCNA and I, and I'm not sure of the entire career journey, but hired on at digital ocean, um, which is a place that, uh, that kind of like AWS, uh, they, uh, do hosted servers and things like that. Right. Um, I don't know exactly what he did when he got there, but on his own, it was, it was kind of a hobby. Um, he was like, man, I am seeing that we need a documentation system here. We need something, my, my little mic is giving me issues this morning. We need something to document the subnets, the, the IP addressing. And, and so he was like, there's nothing out there that I see that does what we need. I'm going to figure this out. And he literally started doing it as a hobby. He started learning Python programming. And that began what is now known today as the product called Netbox. This is that third type of, of employee. Should I go broad? Should I specialize? Some employees will jump in and see a whole massive need where literally nobody has any idea how to fix it. And they will build a solution. I'm not saying you have to become a developer, programmer, anything like that. What I am saying is that there are people out there who will literally build things. And the story of Jeremy Stretch is Netbox, this little hobby that he did on the side. It was an open source project. DigitalOcean gave him some time to do it during work hours as well, which he was like, this is great. Um, eventually became a whole product line, eventually was acquired. I think it's, it's, uh, was acquired by a company called network to code, um, and is now a, a fully funded, like this is, this is all he does is program and make Netbox better. And I mean, once you're there, you're so specialized, you, you, you have such, such amazing knowledge and skills. It's like, you know, <laughs> name your ticket as, as you're, as you're, uh, moving on in the employment line. So, so all those stories, all three of those people are real stories. They're real people. Um, two of them still work for me. Um, Jeremy Stretch, obviously he, he's, he's off in at network to code, building his dream project with Netbox and knowing him, he'll probably finish that and jump into another project, see another need, build another, uh, totally new solution. So, so that's, that, that's kind of a perspective on where, where the road of broad and specialized can take you.